Hello and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on Strat or ETH strategy. Okay, so you can come and check out this website, uh, read through this. It's pretty in, it's pretty interesting. Um, it's a DeFi based on Michael Saylor's, you know, uh, micro strategy strategy B btc strategy so it's it's like that but it's for eth and everything is done on chain so it's all completely uh, tr uh you know auditable uh transparent and everything you can see what's going on and so forth so uh, i've read through the white paper the docs is not live yet obviously this thing is not live yet either so you can kind of take a, you know double check what i'm saying read through this white paper yourselves and uh double s and but i would suggest you to you know reach out to them try to find a way into like uh you know, follow them on on a th uh, on X, and then maybe in the future there will be some community where you can join and you can ask more questions. So as usual, uh, I've read through this as in full, and uh, I've got a flow chart for you to explain how I understand this thing to work. And uh, that's it. So let's get over to the flow chart. Rise is a next generation, high throughput based rollup. Rise chain is ushering in the gigagas era with a parallel execution engine and a continuous pipeline. Find out more at ricelabs.xyz. Okay, so here we are on the flowchart. We have Dollar Bill. Dollar Bill has some dollars and he wants to put them to work. He wants to kind of use this protocol. Now, uh, in this protocol, there's nobody like Michael Saylor. It's the protocol itself. The protocol runs in a, in a, like a transparent way on chain. So then, you know, people, you would consider the protocol itself to be Michael Saylor and the Michael Saylor uh, MicroStrategy Company. Okay, so here we have Dollar Bill. He's an investor. He's got some USDC. And what does he do? He goes to this ETH strategy uh, protocol and he uh, gives up his uh, USDC in order to obtain these two tokens. Now, these are bonds. Okay, they're like bonds. Okay, so so let's say he puts $100 in here. He's going to get $100 worth 100 of these CD tokens which are kind of like stable coins and kind of not okay they're not the, the, it's this protocol is not trying to issue a stable coin it's actually a debt token but it's kind of based on the US dollar a little bit you'll see there's some kind of peg arbitrage a little bit further so anyways so he gives a USDC he gets back some CDT tokens right as well as a an NFT bond that will expire in 4.2 years okay I'll get into this a little bit more details as we go along, okay? So there is a little bit of a, a boost on this uh, on this system. So as the uh, you can read through this uh, this formula here, it says the price of the the Strat token, which is the token inside this bond, uh, versus the oh, what is this? The bond control value. So the bond control value is like a a lever that the governance of this protocol can adjust to kind of make it a little bit more incentivized or a little less incentivized okay and then the debt to market ra uh, market cap ratio so how much this is the debt token right so they'll take the market cap of the the debt and they'll ratio it versus the strat and based on the price of the strat that lever that they can pull versus the the market to debt ratio so what does this mean in simple terms uh if there is a lot of debt already out in the system, then you're going to get a worse ROI. So they want to encourage people to take on debt when there's not very much debt. And they, the, in reference to the, like the, basically the, the TVL of the protocol, the amount of USDC that's gone in there. And they want to in, uh, encourage people to bond when there is uh, a lot of assets inside the treasury and not so much debt, okay? So there's a little formula here. You can dig a little bit deeper if you don't understand what I'm saying, but I think I think I made it pretty clear. Encourage people to take on to, bo to, to bonds when there isn't very much debt and discourage people a little bit when there is a lot of debt, okay? Moving on. So now that they've given, he's given USDC to this protocol and he's gotten back these two tokens, one's an NFT, the other's an ERC20 token, <coughs> this, a, this protocol has to put those assets to work. Now this protocol is, like I said, it's an ETH protocol. It, it's, it, its main goal is for people who are bullish on the price of ETH, okay? That's the whole point of this. Just like MicroStrategy is bullish on the 
price of BTC. This is the same thing here, but with ETH. So they take the USDC or whatever tokens they're going to accept. I, I'm just assuming USDC. It says US dollar tokens. So it could be DAI, it could be FRAX, it could be Tether, it could be any of these. I don't know, right? So it's going to take those. And then it's going to use them on some decks. I just put Uniswap here because, you know, it's common. It, they didn't say anything about Uniswap in, in, the, in the white paper, right? So they're going to take that and they're going to use it to buy ETH. And then some of that ETH they're going to put into Morpho uh, versus the, uh, the, 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 the token inside this bond, right? This Strat token, right? So versus Strat. So it's a single-sided lend uh, U, W ETH to people who supply Strat to borrow this WETH. So it's a lending system. And the other half is single-sided into the liquidity pool of ETH uh, Strat token, okay? So now there is this cool thing about like they're going to start off with all of the ETH inside Morpho. And then after this 400, this 4.2 years, there will be zero ETH inside this Morpho. So there's like a, a decaying curve on, on, on how much ETH they're going to put in here. And it's just to kind of get some like to 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 get some instant APR and that's pretty decent and allow people who have strats to kind of ape this system over here. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. And then the other is to just kind of like it's kind of like buy side liquidity. It's kind of making a floor for strat, just putting ETH on uh, single sidedly into this liquidity pool. Now I'm not sure if this liquidity pool is going to be like a balancer type pool or uh, uh, Uniswap concentrated or a curve. I, I'm not sure. You'll have to look into that a little bit deeper. Okay. So what can he do with this CDT? It's a token right away. He can take it into DeFi. He can sell it for USDC and go and buy something or what have you, you know, or whatever. So basically get his money back and still have this like bond sitting there uh, uh, with this like extra little bonus inside there, right? Or he can, you know, provide liquidity to this some um, liquidity pools out in DeFi and farm some APR on 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 this CDT token as well. Okay, so moving on now. Any at any time, if he wants to kind of rage quit or get out, right? He wants to to stop this. Uh, he he can exercise this uh, this NFT before it expires, right? Before the four point two years, he has to reobtain some of this. Uh, CDT token, right? And when he uses that CDT token to exercise this, so he needs to basically get back his CD tokens that he was issued, right? And when he exercises them, those CD token, that debt token is burned from the system. And then he will get back strat tokens. So anytime he can kind of just, you know, say, I want out, uh, I'll take these, I want my strat tokens now. And then he can take those strat tokens and sell them through this pool, assuming that uh, the prices make sense to do so, or take that strat token and use it to borrow ETH over here or, or whatever, right? So he can decide what he wants to do with that. So he has to kind of watch the prices, pay attention a little bit. So anytime before these expire, he can do this, ex uh, this exercise to strat token. Now, if he waits the four years, uh, which is, you know, 4.2 years is far away. But uh, anyhow, if it, after that 4.2 years is gone, then he can exercise these. Uh, again, he has to obtain his CDT tokens if he's gotten rid of them. And he has, then he will exercise uh, the, the, that option. And he will either get, he can take Strat if he wants, right? Because assuming that Strat is worth a lot at that time, maybe he will take Strat. Or he can take back USDC or ETH, depending on which is less. So the only time he's really going to get ETH is if like, if ETH like in 4.2 years is, is worth much less than it is right now, right? So because there's yield in here and stuff like that. So he's almost always going to get his original debt back when he, uh, like his original lent USDC back or whatever that token happens to be, he can choose, right? Or he can get that strat token and sell it depending on, on, on so forth, okay? Now moving on. So there's another actor in here, Ninja Nick. Ninja Nick is a, a bot runner and he, he's, he's monitoring this system closely and he, he can take on short-term uh, bonds, okay? So what he can do is he say he's watching this CD token and he noticed there's a lot of people selling it. So it's wor well worth, it's worth less than a dollar by a, a significant amount. Then he can use his USDC to, to buy that CDT token 
and then he can burn that CD token for a 69 minute bond. Now, as you can see that the, the actual uh, ratio here is the opposite. So if there is not a lot of, if there is a lot of debt, then he won't get a lot of uh, rewards. And if there's not a lot of debt, or, or sorry, if there is a lot of debt, then he will get good, uh, good rewards. And if there is not a lot of debt, then he will not get a good reward or a good ROI on this. Now, again, of course, he has to watch the price of uh, this uh, strat because he will get strat tokens, which he would then probably have to sell through these pools in order to get back to his like dry powder, right? So anyway, so there's a sophisticated actor who's kind of arbing this, kind of keeping it at a dollar, but like maybe this goes up to $5 and then it, does, it just doesn't make sense for him to arb this. But if it's below a dollar, it probably makes sense for him to arb it. Uh, also, depending on the strat token and as well as the amount of debt inside the system. Okay, so moving on, we have another actor here, Boosted Bill. Boosted Bill doesn't want to understand all these arrows. This is too complicated for him. He just wants to like ape something that's uh, that's popular and people are talking about. So what does he do? Is he takes his uh, ETH and he uses it to buy the strat token. Now the strat token is in essence a long a leverage long on ETH because eventually like this, all of this ETH inside here, this, this accumulating ETH and as ETH comes into the system, it's buying the strat token slowly, right? So first it's gaining APR here. And then after a while, it's taking that ETH and using it to buy this token. So this token is kind of like a leverage long on ETH. And, you know, of course, no, there's no liquidation here. He, he, he can sell it. But, you know, there is a little bit of speculation. There is some price movement in here. This will be a volatile asset, especially when the liquidity is not substantial. So he might have to wait for his uh, the strat to recover from some price dip that actually happens, but it, he can kind of take it as, as is, that is his mind. Yeah, it's a long, a leverage long ETH on, on, on so forth. Okay, so moving on. The last thing he can do is if he buys that strat, he can kind of loop this, right? He can use that strat to borrow some ETH and then he can lever up and get some more strats and then use that strat to borrow some more ETH. Of course, he has to consider like the price movement of strat inside the system versus the amount of, uh, you know, interest he needs to pay. And it's probably not going to be very profitable because the, you know, he's probably going to have to pay more, but you know, these trading fees might be significant and there might be other opportunities. Like the protocol might decide to, to do other things with the ETH besides these two, pro, uh, these two op options that are outlined in the white paper. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, there's a few things I will mention that are pretty keen and I think you should really understand and that is that like some of these tokens, there are there, there are these specific tokens inside the system, right? So there's the CD, CDT and there is the uh, NFT and then there is the actual strat token, okay? So a, a few key things I want to say is that like there are uh, there will never be uh, more strat inside this system than there is value in the treasury. Okay, now the only because the only way to get strat is by exercising these NFTs, and the only way to get these NFTs is by supplying you know assets and minting them. Right now, uh, and in order to get the CDT, you need to actually have given assets, and the the CDT will always be burned, right? So the only way to get CDT is to supply assets. Now that I, I did make a small mistake, you can, they can print these NFTs and they can give these NFTs to people because in order to actually exercise these NFTs, someone will need to buy this CDT and that will push it above peg and then people's CDT will be worth more than a dollar and they can sell it and buy it back and so forth. Okay. So I guess that's it for today. I hope this has been useful and interesting. It, it is a pretty new idea protocol it's not uh, live and uh, there th what i'm saying here might be subject to change there might be inaccuracies in this system uh in my description of this system in like you know a few weeks or months or they might change something altogether okay so that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching and goodbye